Avenue, Citizens and Friends. When one thinks of Julius Caesar, images of grand battles, the expanse of the Roman Empire, and the intense debates within the Senate may come to mind. Yet, amid all these responsibilities and visions of grandeur, my daily life is a myriad of simple routines, strategic meetings, and personal reflections. Permit me a moment to pull back the curtains and allow you a glimpse into the day of one who once stood at the helm of the greatest empire on earth. Awakening in my villa, I'm surrounded by the soft chirrings of birds from the sprawling gardens and the faint voices of the bustling Roman streets beyond. As dawn breaks, my personal servant attends to me. First, a light breakfast, usually olives, bread, cheese, and perhaps a grape or two, to nourish the body. This is followed by a reading of the day's news brought by messengers from all corners of the empire. Even as the most powerful man in Rome, staying informed is vital. Despite my rank, I have never neglected my physical training. Being a soldier at heart, a part of my morning is dedicated to exercise. Sometimes it's a spirited ride around the Roman countryside, while on other days, I engage in swordplay with my closest generals. These sessions not only keep me fit but allow me to bond with my men, ensuring loyalty and mutual trust. By mid-morning, I make my way to the heart of Rome. At the Roman Senate or within the various offices I maintain, I'm confronted with scrolls stacked high, each representing a decision to be made, a dispute to be settled, or an update from the provinces. The success of our empire rests on meticulous governance. Rome thrives on alliances, and the midday meal is not just about sustenance but also about politics. On any given day, I might be dining with dignitaries from distant lands, influential senators, or military leaders. These are moments to forge alliances, discern the mood of the city, and discuss the empire's future. In the afternoons, I often attend public events. These could be the exciting chariot races at the Circus Maximus or theatrical performances at various venues throughout Rome. Here, I'm not just an observer but a representative of Roman prestige. It's essential to be seen, to maintain a connection with a common Roman, and to ensure that our culture and way of life flourish. Despite the vastness of our territories, maintaining control and ensuring peace is paramount. As such, late afternoons are often spent in strategic sessions with my generals. The might of Rome must always be ready for both defense and expansion. As the sun sets, casting a golden hue upon Rome's marble structures, I retreat to my private quarters. It's a time for reflection. Here, surrounded by scrolls and tomes, I immerse myself in the writings of great thinkers and philosophers. This intellectual nourishment guides my decisions and ensures I never become complacent. The evening meal is an intimate affair, often shared with close friends and family. It's a time to relax, discuss art, music, and philosophy, far from the pressing concerns of governance. Following this, a visit to the Roman baths is customary. Immersed in the warm waters, surrounded by soft murmurs and the flicker of torches, I find solace and rejuvenation. Rome never truly sleeps. In the quiet hours of the night, when the city's heartbeat slows, I sometimes convene with trusted advisors. It's in these clandestine meetings, away from prying eyes, that many of the empire's critical strategies are formulated. Such is a day in my life. It's a blend of duty and leisure, introspection and action. And yet, amid these daily rituals and responsibilities, I'm constantly driven by a singular vision, the greatness of Rome. To serve this empire, to ensure its glory, is both my burden and my privilege. Now, as the dawn approaches once more, I bid you farewell, trusting that this intimate account brings you closer to understanding the man behind the legend. Valete. Julius Caesar.